What is up, guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Tyranny. My name is Splattercat, and we are looting a dead guy. He's got a wet stone. Okay. I try to keep my stones dry, but that's all right. A potion of protection, plus two to armor. Sounds good, too. He probably should have popped that before he, uh... He probably... Oh, we got to work on this scroll speed. Hold on. This scroll speed's got to move. I like my scroll speed a little bit. A little bit more peppy. A little bit more peppy in its steppy. And then graphically, what do we have going on in here? Oh, well, we got to dial that up. We got to we gotta bang that out right there. And look at that. They didn't cap the frame rate because they're decent human beings that know how to design computer games. Good for them. The avalanche has us blocked. Think you can fit through that rubble? Hell yeah. Let's see here. I can squeeze through the gap or I can move the boulder. Oh, move it. Ah, ah, we squished a dude. Hell yeah. Got him. Ooh, you've been stabbed in the booty hole. Enjoy that. Yep, coming straight at you with the pointy stick for the b-hole. Get her with a smite. Here we go. This girl's about to get it. Wow. Oh, that did not do what I expected to do. Dude, you're hitting for one damage. Come on, man. Put some strength into that strike. Put some fervent... Like, put the strength of the Empire into that thing. These are filthy rebels. These are rabble, although they do wear really, really nice armor. While we're on the side, I need to shield bash somebody like right now. You want to come to the fight? I heard it's going to be a bash. He said as he put his shades on, and then I'm going to send her. Does this, like, cost me anything to do this? It feels a little bit slower than Pillars of Eternity, but I think I'm okay with that because I tend to get caught up on Minutia and, like, getting confused with the things I want to cast with other CRPGs, and so I'm okay with it, I think. Wow, these guys are durable. I feel like maybe I should be hitting harder. Then again, I didn't put a whole lot of points into my stats either. There it is. Hopefully we get more stat points later on down the line. I think this is going to be fun. I'm excited about this. If we can get Masquerada finished off, we can replace it with this, though. What is this? A Sun Soldier's Javelin. Okay, can I throw it? What's up with this dude? The soldier... Don't bother with me! Go down to the pass! Drastis, he's... The soldier clutches his gut and winces. You can see his entrails between his fingers. Good God. You're wounded, and it's not trivial. That helm is legit, though. He laughs through clenched teeth. This... It's a scratch. I've seen twice as worse ten times over. He doubles in pain, gagging and shivering. Let me help you. I said I'm fine. The soldier moans and shakes his head. Graven Ash protects. You go on and help the others. By Graven's will, I move on then. Don't say I didn't try to help, though. I tried. This dude's just packing much. Waking death will revive when defeated for 120 seconds. Okay. I don't know what that entails, man. We've been crucifying some dudes out here. It's a little nasty. This guy got one arm free, but I don't know if that's going to be good enough. Try and catch me, worm. A young Scarlet Fury weaves around the Vendrian guard attackers, avoiding their weapons with fluid grace. She nods to acknowledge you. A breathless enemy soldier pauses a glance to her countrymen. This one's crazy. Too much lead in her water. We've got to cut our losses and turn back. Ah, <sighs> Fate Finder. Here, here at last. Care to join me in putting these cowards out of their misery? Save one for me. For the realm of Apex. Charge! The Vendrian Guard leveled their weapons in advance. I don't think it's going to help. I don't think it's going to help you at all. Where'd our other homie go? We had another homie over here. Now we don't have a homie. Our homeostasis has been disrupted. Alright, so does that... I assume that I just do this like I do? Okay. Alright, you guys go over here. We're going to see what she's got going on, though. What's she got? So she has blood-soaked stone. Coordinate with burst to knock your target prone and follow up with a bleeding attack. Oh, do that. Do that right now. And then for me, I think, uh, I think I'll have at them with a smite. That's what I think. Oh, flattened. Went at him. Good night. Okay, well, what else we got going on here? Hold on, I like this girl. I like a woman with some fight in her. That's sexy right there. Okay. So we got burning iron. Launch a burning arrow that sets foes on fire. All right, blood-soaked stone. What was that right there? Skewer. Oh, maybe she didn't do blood-soaked stone. Do that one right there. Blood soaks the stone, and I will shield bash, for I am mighty. Hey, you didn't do the thing. Ready? Do the thing, dog. There you go. Sweet kick. Oh. Man, we went down. We just like, wow, with that Dragon Ball Z punch. Laid him out. Got our business taken care of, because we don't play like that. I'm going to recover for a minute. Can I Can I do that thing right there? Yeah, do that thing. Ah. 
the hair shake of mightiness. Phew. I can tell you didn't spend the conquest in a diplomat's tent. The fighter surveys the fresh corpses and nods with satisfaction. I'm verse, by the way. But there are more important things to take care of than introductions. Those Vendrian guard we killed didn't come alone. She gestures to the skirmish unfolding in the pass below, shaking her head. I thought that said the piss for a second. I was like, ew, we're fighting in piss? Man, this sucks. Uh, why are the Vendrian guard attacking right now? <sighs> My guess. The Vendrian Guard are testing our strength in battle, learning how we perform before they organize a real offensive. That or they're really, really desperate to get beyond the mountains and couldn't wait until nightfall. What are you doing here? The voices of Narat told me to intercept you at Edgering Ruins before you busied yourself solving all of the camp's problems. <sighs> Guess I was too late. I like that, how we can mouse over things that we don't understand and it gives us a little tooltip to explain who these people are that they're referencing. Like stuff our character would know. I like that a lot. You're due for a meeting with the Archons, but we should handle the small matter of this ambush first. You fight like a storm. What was your role in the army? A Scarlet Fury, one of the elite killers of our ignoble gang. You'll see more than a few of us around camp, but don't let that fool you. We're a rare breed. Most of the soldiers in the Scarlet Chorus are little more than farmers and children armed with rusted forks. Makes them easier to control. The voices of Narat called his best fighters to this siege. There must be something important about Vendrian's well, though don't ask me what. The Archon isn't in the habit of spilling secrets. Alright, well let's join the battle. Eager! <laughs> I like that. Before we go, you might search among the remains of our fallen comrades. Wherever they're bound, I doubt they'll miss their boots, much less any rings or any useful iron they might be clutching. Practical. I like it. No reason to pity the fallen. Before long, we might wish we'd joined them here. But at least we'll enjoy heavy pockets and warm toes. For the voices of Narat! For the voices! Verse furrows her brow and focuses down on the battle to come. Hell yes, yeah, son. Let's go ahead and get some loot here. Oh, we got a broken helmet. Okay, so we can sell that as spare parts. Oh, good. It gets all the stuff together. A Scarlet Fury Helm. Okay, probably nicer than what I have going on. Indeed, it does look like it is. Although I lose accuracy. So, we've also got a Bronze Axe. We've got a Lesser Healing Potion. A Sigil of Reaching Grasp. And then we've got a Hide. Okay. Anything else around here? Doesn't look like it. Let me jump into my inventory screen here and we'll see what we can do. So we've got booties right here. The Commander's Will. Deflection of seven. Cleansing victory. Only Leomond. Leomond can equip these. Does it actually change my booties? Oh, it does. The boots change. Hooray. I like things like that. It makes me happy. What else we got going on? Where did the rest of the loot go? This item cannot be interacted with due to your... Oh, okay, so we get a Fate Binder seal. Alright, but where did our loot go? The party stash. Ah, there it is. It's the party stash. Well, oh, that's the helmet right there. That's the helmet that tells people judgment has come. We're coming here to cut out hearts and cause all kinds of drama. Okay. Alright, I got you. We're looking good though right now. We're looking real good. Let's go ahead and get into this thing. Hey, you lady, come with me. Oh shit, I'm all alone. Eyes forward, no looking back. The Vendrian guard warrior roars with his falcs held high, his words largely lost over the din of combat. An enduring symbol of military life in the tears adapted from the agrarian scythes of Azure, this curved blade was in ages past, the weapon of peasants forced into battle. Okay, swords into plowshares and all that. You. As his attention lands on you, a double take of recognition comes over the man's face. The peace finder from the war. If you've come to once again talk peace, it seems like you're too late. Drop your weapon and perhaps we can settle without bloodshed. We knew that violating the surrender meant an end to what little mercy and goodwill Kairos forces have or ever will show us. There's no turning back now. He shakes his head with a frown. I know you tried to do right by us in the past, but now you're between us and the way out. It's nothing personal. Fate Binder, did I hear that correctly? Maybe you misunderstand why we're here. As he signals his men to charge, the sound of chanting rises from the south, drawing his attention. Scarlet Chorus reinforcements! Hurry!
Run down the Oathbreakers. Let none escape. From the red mob of reinforcements from the south, a blood chanter emerges at the head of the rabble, the ornamental crest of her staff pulsing with crimson tones. Signing sigils of magic and wordlessly moving her mouth, the blood chanter scribes a series of spells into the air. A red glow surrounds the Vendrian guard warriors as the chanter's magic worms its way into their minds, blinding them with rage. Hold position, all of you. You there, keep to the path. The warrior gestures along the canyon trail, but his warriors turn his, their attention to the Scarlet Chorus, roaring challenges. No, don't engage them, we need to run! His orders fall on deaf ears. The warrior reluctantly readies his weapon. Ain't no running now. I mean, I guess there's getting run through. Ow, I've been javelied. No! My previously pristine anus now has jackal, or now has javelins in it. It's useless and we should try something else? All right, well, let's hit him with a sunder then. And then for her, go ahead and knock him prone if you could, please. Oh, we failed. We missed. Okay, my health is already getting low. I may need to drink a healing potion. There we go. That's what I like to see. And then we'll bring in a sunder. And then for her, we'll bring in an impale. There it is. Now we're dealing real damage. She's got her flame arrow. Does that explode, though? I'm a little worried about it. Ooh. He's now... Oh, he's on fire. He's like, oh, no, 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 no. I don't think he wants to be on fire. That's the sound I make when I catch on fire. Go, oh, no, 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 no. Right. Next time around, go ahead and heal myself because I'm not looking so good right now. We're definitely catching rounds at the moment. Oh, I canceled my turn out. For you, my lady... Oh, you ain't got nothing going on. Rot spear. Ow. I will sunder you, dog. Who are you to come at me with your implements? You do not terrify me. I stand on this field. On this field. Shield bash. Uh, get some. Will do. Ooh. Caught that fool with a Kamehameha wave. Come quick. Situation on the cliff side. They've got the commander. Can I loot the bodies first? I want treasure. A broken helm. Will do. Okay. Couple of debtors down here. We've got horde boots. All right. Several skulls bleached by the sun and picked clean by carrion birds are spiked on a roughly hewn post. It is the only heraldry the Scarlet Chorus needs. Ooh, treasure. Yes, please. Let me have your box, treasure. Oh, head wrap. We got a bandana. So we can be throwing it up like, East Side Scarlet Chorus, where you at, son? Where you at, cuz? Throwing out them zip codes and shit. Just be like, hey, we from the 881, homie. Symbol of the Scarlet Chorus is smeared in the blood on tattered cloth tents. No effort has been made to fix the gaping tears. Okay. We hold down the tab key so that we can see what's lootable. That's fairly standard for games like this. He's got Skycap. Hooray. We've got another dead dude over here, and we've got Kozma, who is apparently hiding from battle. We've got Vendrian Guard Heavy Bronze Greaves. Well, we gotta we gotta have that. I mean Let's let's have a look. Let's have a little look see here and see what we could do with these because I plan on making my guy like a warrior, like a full-on tank, just a ball of metal going straight at the enemy. So we've got seven deflection right there. These have, they don't have deflection, but they just give you flat out just like armor. And then you also get resist to crush and corrode. Oh, and they've got metal on them. A disengagement defense. I don't disengage once we go into battle. We go into battle. There is no hiding and there's no retreating. What are you doing? You draw attention to me. How do I? Why can't I take the plate mail off the stands right there? See? Stow your weapons and we'll find out how long a man screams before hitting the ravine down below. Cornered between a precipitous drop and a band of angry soldiers, the Oathbreaker warrior holds a disfavored officer at knife point. Skewer him. Worry not for me. Graven Ash protects. The disfavored warrior winces, blood seeping from the seams of his bracers and cuirass. 
You heard the man. He plainly invited you to use that little blade of yours. What are you waiting for? Permission from your pimp? This blade, with a jerk of the knife, he slices off a clump of Drass's matted hair. If you're so eager to see your ally dead, step closer. I'm gonna athletics this dude. We can conquest him. We can tell him he knows that we're honorable, so we can play on my honor to get the guy back, or we can just athletics his ass. Let's athletics his ass. The Oathbreaker cracks a wide smile as you lower your weapon. That's right, now the rest of you drop those weapons. With his attention on the other warriors, you dash forward. He reaches out with his dagger to slay Drassus, but your hand is already on his wrist. With a wrenching twist, you mangle his hand, dropping the dagger harmlessly to the ground. The disfavored warriors rush forward from either side of you. Tyrell barely manages a strained gasp before being hacked and impaled upon their swords and spears. Kairos be praised. That Oathbreaker fought with the rage of Karen himself. Drastus slides a trembling hand along the cut on his neck. Thank you, Fate Biter. I thought today was my last. Karen is the mountainous Archon of Stone, who accompanies the disfavored on the conquest of the Tears. So he has a temper and a proclivity towards destructive solutions, and is branded as a liability. Okay. From the look of it, guess they thought if they swarmed the pass, maybe one might make it out. We found a few scraps of parchment on the bodies. He holds out a handful of crumpled parchments for your inspection. Literacy is rare in the Northern Empire where the disfavored are born and trained. Time is spent reading and writing. After all, his time spent spar or his time not spent sparring and writing one's body and mind for battle. So we're kind of like Spartans then. We kind of ignore that shit and we just want to get into the fray. I'll look at the parchment. Repeating the same messages in different written scripts, the parchments explain the Vendarian guards' desire to overthrow Kairos Archons and rout the armies from the tears. The pages aren't addressed to any specific reader, but rather openly invites all who remain loyal to the younger realms to gather at Vendrian's wall. It's recruitment material. They were trying to bring more traitors to the fight. Well, from the look of it, we kept them from slipping out of the valley. Whatever they hoped to accomplish, I think their plan died here. The Archons are expecting you. When you're ready, uh, lead by the gate to the southeast and follow the trails down slope for a few hours. You'll see the campfires leagues away. You can't miss it. I'm about to take this guy's dagger. I bet he's got a special dagger. It's like the dagger of neck stabbing. Plus seven. He's got a quick finger bangle. It's an accessory. It gives you plus one to quickness. No matter how fast you move, these bangles never make a sound. He's also got an honor guard's bronze falx. It's two-handed, so I can't use that. All right, well, we'll take these. And now that I've got the jewelry here and the accessories, we'll pop that on because I do think that quickness is probably going to be useful to our character. We lack it, and being able to attack quicker seems like it's going to be a weak spot and otherwise decent repertoire of ass-kicking abilities. The prisoner says his name's Tarkas Demos. Drassus lets out a long sigh, tapping his gauntleted finger to his temple. Then I don't think this is a complicated matter. He dies. His family's been a driving force in the Vendrian Guard. Killing him should demoralize whatever's left of the Tarkas clan. But we must offer the enemy redemption. The mage turns to you without knowing smile. When we first conquered the pass and your fool Archon Cairn killed half of our scouts, the Fatebinder here knew the wisdom in letting the chorus replenish their numbers even if it meant acquiring some undesirable talent. We'd let you take prisoners, but you can't control them. You send these conscripts out on patrol and they never return, defecting all over again. I can't let this nonsense strategy continue. Well, I insist this Oathbreaker be taken to the voices of Nerat, leaving us at an impasse. Fortunately, we have a fate binder here to settle the matter for us. The Chanter turns to you, an expectant smile creeping across her face. So what say you? What should become of this prisoner? Uh, they already had a chance to surrender. That's, that's what I say. They had a chance to surrender, and that's that. One chance is enough. The Tearsmen can't be trusted. Rakes, thieves, whores, nothing more. We were far too merciful the first time. He nods to a nearby soldier. Have him tied up. He and his friends can watch each other rot in the sun. I won't keep you here any longer, Fate Binder. I know you have important business in the valley. He salutes you, his iron gauntlet wrapping against his breastplate. For the glory of Kairos. For the glory of Kairos, brother. Alright, so I assume we are headed off to somewhere. Fate Binder, pleasure to have you with us. You never really know if one of two non's officers is battle ready until the fighting breaks out. She nods with approval. You clearly can hold your own in a fight. Broad-shouldered, disfavored soldier snaps to salute. And thank Kairos for that. There's been too much talk of late, not enough action. The Archon of War is planning his next move. Would you have him hasten his plans for your impatience? Superior officer glares through the gap in her helm. I've never, ma'am. Graven Ash protects. She holds her salute with a tightly clenched fist. I'm just eager to see the Vendrian Guard buried under their own patched defenses. You need anything? 
All right. Well, if there's nothing important over here, I don't know if there's going to be like another. We're a judge essentially, and so I assume that frequently we're going to be called to like rule on things. And, you know, they're going to ask us, like, what should we do? And we've got to put rulings on things. Because as I understand it, we're supposed to be a bit of an arbiter, or I guess an adjudicator. Can't do that. We've got something going on over here. 35 athletics to climb the rope. Okay. See that? Oh, hey. We've got a potion of invisibility that's hidden up inside of there. Oh, we can also stealth by pressing the alt key. Hooray. <coughs> Okay, so where are we off to then? Sorry, I can't. Looks like there's a gate or something like that, a portcullis down here. So we'll make our way down to the southeast. That poor bastard just hanging up in the sun. Brutal to the disfavored camp. I wonder how important keeping track of time is going to be, like if there's going to be like time-sensitive things that need to get done. They toyed with that as a mechanic in Pillars of Eternity, but it was never too important. Oh, we got plus one to our one-handed weapons. Right. Nice. Take what you can carry, but leave the card. Otherwise, seize, we seize you and your wares. Hail, Faithbinder. The disfavored scout nods at your approach. Can't on up ahead. Don't mind us. We're just clearing out the rabble. I still don't understand what I've done to offend. I respect that these are now disfavored lands, and I'm happy to give the Legion a proper toll, but she's going on about trading rights. What nonsense is that? I'm not allowed to trade one thing for another? It's not like I'm selling weapons to angry peasants or anything of the sort. The Overlord regulates all trade. If you lack the proper permits, your goods are forfeit. Trade permit? Well, how was I... I mean, to whom would I speak for such a thing? Not us and not our problem. Maybe march your butt to Bastard City and plead your case before Tunan. Let's lighten your burden and relieve you of your wares first. That would make the long trek a bit more bearable. Anything that can be argued before Tunan can be argued here. What's there to discuss? We should kill this mongrel and... The warrior pauses, placing her hand in front of her mouth. If the, fate wait, if the faint biter wishes to weigh in on the matter, courtesy demands we listen. The soldier clears her throat, looking at you expectantly. This is a disfavored matter, but I know the agents of the court do so love to throw their judgments around. Well, you could rob me now and have my supplies today... The merchant grabs a flask from his cart, or you can leave me alive and have fermented honey all year long. I even know a new family recipe for painkillers and healing droughts. Drafts. Certainly any army will need those. He uncorks a small ceramic vial and an aroma of cloves and lanolin assaults your nose. These are essential goods for the war effort. Leave them intact. But he has no permits. You're allowing this lowborn wretch to profit when he should toil like any other conquered tearsman. Fatebinder, it is your right to settle disputes when we lock horns with the chorus, but you have no authority on this matter. But, I do have the authority to write him a permit. Trust me, he'll be of use to the Legion. You seem so bent on protecting this Tearsman, so be it, but spare us both the parchment. She steps in close to Hagnan and gives the peddler a one-arm shove. Peddle your wares, but know that you're one mistake away from being strung about the Palisades as a warning to others. Understood, ma'am. The merchant bows deeply. You've shown me great mercy and I shall not squander it. I'll endeavor to keep this camp supplied to the best of my ability. My deepest thanks. I thought I was going to be robbed and left for dead, and here I thought the disfavor would thank me for trying to bring in fresh provisions. I'll be sure to keep my head down and not make any waves. This is pretty awesome. This is kind of like being a stormtrooper. Slow down a moment. I know we're both eager to watch the Archons bicker over tactics like a pair of magpies, but I need to ask you something first. And what's that? The voices of Narat told me you've come as a mediator. Considering the source, well... I can't help but feel I'm only hearing half the story, so let's have it out. What's so special about you? Well, what did the voice of Narat tell you? Only that I could find you in the Edgering Ruins. Truthfully, I could have picked you out of a crowd. You're the only one who hasn't spent the last few months bathing in the stink of the Matani River. She laughs, but there's a forced nature to it. I'm here with an edict. That makes a crazy kind of sense, considering how long the siege has taxed the armies. I can understand why Kairos would send you with an edict to speed things along. Have you read it? Do you know what it says? That is not for you to know. If you're telling the truth, I suppose I'll hear about it soon enough anyways. She nods to herself. Let's go meet with the Archons. Hey, don't let me hold you back. I'm sure whatever you're here to do is important enough that you don't need me stepping in your path. The war tent is just past the center of the camp. 
And one last thing, be careful around the disfavored types. They take their work seriously, and most have suffered too many blows to the head. Okay. Sorry, I can't. I'll keep that in mind then. Gotta see if anybody's hidden anything in any of these stumps over here. I like to see if there's any treasures around. How do I speed up time? I gotta make time go quicker while we're running about. Let's see, I do not know any core sigils. You will need to select a core sigil before proceeding. The sigil of focused intent. Expression used to create spells that affect single targets near the caster. Okay. So apparently I can do something like that right there. Does she have something she wants to say? You have my attention. Spit out whatever you have to say. What do you need? Are you a spy for the voices of Nerat? Voice regards you with an unreadable expression or mismatched eyes look at each of yours in turn. I mean, does it even matter? You have to decide for yourself whether or not I'm worth trusting. Is keeping me along with the risk that I'll spill the occasional word about what you ate for breakfast? Okay. Just point me in the right direction. Doesn't look right. like there's anything big over there. I think... We're going to hang out right here before we go into the city. Go no further. You approach the disfavored ground. State your business. I am Leomond, fate binder of Tunan, and I bring words from Kairos for the commander's ears. Ah, so you're the fire starter. Sevius and the company is returning from the burning library, telling some harrowing stories about the Kairos edict of fire. I think myself brave, but I'm happy to have been far away from it all. It must have been a terrifying honor to be the messenger of such righteous force. Come on in. He gestures towards the gate. The Archons are expecting you. You'll find them in the war tent at the center of the camp. I'm always getting interrupted when I do these things, and this was an important thing. My wife hit me up, and she was like, so what do you want on your pizza? And I was like, well, the episode's going to have to be abridged. i got to decide what I want on my pizza. It's the only way. We have a pair of stone shield boots on this side. I will take them. Basically, I'm going to pilfer everything I get my hands on. No time to chitter, too much armor to mend. Hail to you, guardian of the law. The man dressed in merchant finery greets you with a smile. If you have a few excess rings weighing you down, best unburden yourself before the battle. You know that the disfavor suffer a merchant in their camp. There must be a man selling only the finest provisions and armaments. Okay, so I'm a noble scion. My father is familiar with trade. Might I inspect it? Your stock, that is. He hesitates and then corrects with a welcoming smile. Of course, uh, by all means, I have nothing to hide. He makes a show of removing a crate's lid and showing you off his wares with an open palm. His supplies are all perfectly ordinary. You see nothing out of place or unauthorized by his mercantile license. Hmm. I'm not going to steal from him. I'm an arbiter of the law. Everything seems to be in order here. I'm going to play this like Judge Dredd, essentially. Like, I am the law, and I am immutable and unbudging in my pursuit of it. Glad to hear it. There isn't a temptation in the world that would steer me from the good favor of Tunon or Kairos. Let me see your wares. What you got going on, homie? Camping supplies, blood moss. I'll probably try to unload... Well, I don't know. We got some stuff sitting around. I mean, we might as well sell it. I see no reason why I should be wasting it, you know? So what are these? These are rings. Copper rings. And then we get gold rings. Or bronze rings on top of that. Okay. We got four supplies. And we've got one's bronze ring. What's that? Iron rings? Okay. Cool. Now that I know what the currency is that we're dealing with here. We've got Barrack. Dude, this guy's armor is baller. You can't make out the ironclad soldier's expression under his twisted helmet. He merely stares at you. That's fine. He can stare. I am a being of some repute. I destroyed an entire city with a word. They can look at me all day long. I don't give a damn. Is she good at subterfuge? I guess not. What are her skill sets? Maybe I should look into this. So her skills. She's good with bows, dual wielding, magical staves, one-handed weapons. Support skills. She's got parry and 35 subterfuge, but it's not quite there yet. Isatanas curses the air as the blade of thin iron breaks in half beneath his hammer. Pairing weapons with scrap isn't exactly why I got into this craft, but our supplies are spent. He wipes the sweat from his brow and gets a better look at you. Why not forge some bronze? He huffs. You of all people know how much our iron means to us. He slaps you on the shoulder. A special discount on all my wares just for you. During the Apex campaign, Scarlet soldiers repurposed his favorite gear for their own needs. You upheld northern tradition by returning the arms to the Legion and punishing the Chorus. Oh, good. Okay, bronze will do in a pinch, don't get me wrong. It can take a beating and get bent back into shape, unlike the stubborn iron we have here. He glances at a pile of his work with dread. We always have plenty of tin and copper lying around, so supplies aren't the problem. It's a rare smith, though, who can churn out military-grade bronze consistently. More often than not, it comes out soft. 
Look around the camp. We're garbing the Legion head to toe in iron because it's cheaper and easier to produce for the masses. Couldn't do that with bronze. They called it his favorite, the Iron Legion, for that reason. Strategy and skill may be our backbone, but our claws are made of iron. The good stuff that comes from the Smiths and Lethians Crossing. There's a shortage? Afraid so. Last shipment sent down the Matani went missing near Echo Call Crossing, but I'm afraid we won't be seeing any more of that now that the valley is sealed. Forgebound iron is too non-specialty. Why is this the first time hearing of it? Keep your voice down. Isotanus flinches and lowers his own. Graven Ash doesn't want to cause a panic or pass any information to the Ventry Guard. Best case scenario, the iron tumbled off a boat and is rusting on a riverbed. Worst case, it ends up in enemy hands. Well, if I find myself there, I'll keep an eye out. Appreciate it, as does the Great General, more than you might guess. Maybe he isn't quick to offer his thanks to outsiders, but I know he'll be grateful for your help. It could be a boon to the war effort if our iron was recovered. Well, you can trust me to handle this. I knew Tunan would have dispatched you, wouldn't have dispatched you without good reason. The court isn't exactly known for gambling when the stakes are high. He glances to a crate beside him and points to a small set of notches in the wood. See that? That's how we tell apart our iron shipments from the rest. Inconspicuous so people don't go snooping around. We want to keep an eye out for these. Good hunting. Okay, so there's notches on yours. And we've got ourselves a new quest, but we're out of time for the day. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for stopping on in for what is really kind of the first episode in our playthrough of Tyranny. I really like the graphics they used in this one. I think they did a really, really good job with it. It stands out. And it'll age really, really well as time goes along. And I think that's probably what they were going for. Subterfuge. And we leveled up. We got bronze bracers. Cool. We got what looks like beast blood pollen and a lesser sigil of strength. Something every day. Do I not get in trouble for stealing? Apparently I don't. Bye, everybody. I'll see you next time. Thank you.